Brown University. And the match is about to take place in about a minute. I'm Shane Hyde, the head coach of the Vancouver Island University women's volleyball team. And next to me is Rick Beavis, the former Vancouver Island University women's head coach, Canada Games coach, provincial team coach, member of Volleyball BC. So tonight, me and Rick will be here giving you your play-by-play -play for this exciting gold medal game, I'm sure, between the number one ranked team, the Hansworth Royals, and the number seventh ranked team, the Earl Marriott Mariners. In a few seconds here, we'll turn it over to the BIU announcer, Matt Carter, who will introduce the each team, their starters, and have our national anthem. It's a very loud gym today here, Rick. Yeah, lots of energy, lots of athletes out here uh, supporting their friends. We've got a good contingency from the North Shore. I think it's uh, the Westman girls uh, out here to support Hansworth. We'll turn it over to Matt Carter. We'll be back in a few minutes here.
All right, once again, welcome to the 2015 4A Provincial Championships. Rosters are set. All the uh, introductions are taking place. We got our gold medal match happening right now. Rick, what's going through these kids' minds right now? Well, I think uh, Hansworth is a very experienced team. They have a lot of uh, grade 12 athletes. Well coached, so uh, we'll see if they can come out strong. While the Mariners from Earl Marriott are uh, a younger team, uh, prone to a little bit more inconsistency, but uh, Mark Castle is a very experienced coach, and uh, you know these kids have battled hard just to get into the final, fin finishing third in their pool play. Uh, so they've uh, they've really turned it around. So I think we're going to have a really well balanced match. So this match is a best of five, and it's Earl Marriott to start serving first. First server here is Kara Katurakis, who's their captain, and you'll see, is their star player. He's gonna be leading them off here. Both teams play a 6-2, which means the setters will also hit. And referee Cam Tung blows the whistle to start this match. And it's blocked there by Hansworth. And the first point. You can already see a nice energy level on both teams. Skilled setters. medal match. Absolutely. Both teams are showing that they're ready to play. Yeah, absolutely. A couple, couple great rallies. <laughs> Slight miss hit there by Kyla Oxland. One of many great players coming out of that Oxland family. Kayla is grade 10. She's on the big stage already. And there's a tip that scores by Tyra Anderson. And Tyra is a grade 10 as well, so some key players, uh, young players playing for both of these teams, hey Rick? That was an interesting choice. You tipped from quite a ways off the net and it still scored. Mm. Good swing. Very nice swing there by Danielle Corrigan. Grade 12 middle from Hansworth. Once again, both of these teams are showing that they have some solid setting, which makes Maybe that's a reason why they're here. In the yeah, the whole level of play is going to be elevated from the bronze medal game. That's a hitting error from number eight. Tara Koble. And it's Oxlund back to serve for Hansworth. Scores tied at 3-3. And a 
great swing nice. there by the captain, Maya Bennett. This Hansworth team, every player seems to be able to swing and they, they play a great team defense out there as well. A late, a late call uh, by the referee. There, they were calling a carry on that first contact. Not, uh, not sure what he was seeing. And ball served long yep. by Oxland. Well, that's some volleyball karma there for you. Yeah. Questionable ball handling call. Ball never lies, right? That's that's right. Great defense there by Hansworth. Oh. And blocking. That's number 10, Danielle Corrigan. She's had a couple early blocks. Oh, she has beautiful timing. Penetrates over the net really well. I think she's gonna be one to watch for this match. Maya Bennett back to serve the captain of this Hansworth Royals team. She's serving at a score 7-4. First set, this is a best, best of five match. There it is again. And another block from Hansworth. This time I think it was number seven, Nicola Ross, their setter. early lead here for Hansworth. I, it's good for Hansworth, but uh, probably not the start that Mark Castles, Coach Mark Castles wanted here. Nice angle on that back row attack. It's a side out that the Mariners really needed. Ooh. I don't know what you call that. Swing, power tip, what do you? I think it's just uh, nice athleticism. T number 10, uh, Danielle. Getting the job done. Just misses. Yes, that was Danielle Cor Corrigan. Score is six, serving nine. It's number two, Charlotte Pavlik coming in for the Earl Marriott Mariners. She's coming in to serve. She's a great 11 outside hitter. a great swing off hands from number nine, Kara Katurikis. I think she might have got a little lucky on that, but uh, you got to be good to be lucky. So uh, bottom line is she got the uh, ball to go off the of blocker's hands. And 
And for those people that aren't familiar with the, uh, the senior girls' rules, uh, you are allowed to play the ball off the, the roof or anything above, as long as it stays on your own side. And a point there for the Hansworth Royals, making it 11-7 off a very good serve by Nicola Ross. She's back to serve again, number seven. there by number four, Danica Ahawk. Coach's that, daughter. Coach's daughter, yes, that's Alan's daughter. Alan Ahawk, the coach of Hansworth. Terrific rally. What a Jane, difference in ball control for, for, for both of these teams from well, what we saw in the bronze medal match. The, the Mariners are uh, going to have to try to figure out how to stop Hansworth Royals. <laughs> I <just> spoke too <laughs> soon on that one. I don't think that's what they had in mind, but, uh, but boy, the Royals, their ball control, they just keep swinging. And uh, even with the Mariners playing some great defense, Both of these teams running a running an offense, not just keying on one player. And their defense, ball control, serve receive. It's the Hansworth Royals Libero is playing fantastic. Defense and serve receive. Another beautiful dig there. Yeah, great angled hit. And that's what happens when um, when you're playing great defense. The hitters are having to be forced to, to make unbelievable shots, and a lot of times that forces yep, that they error. Right? Try to be a little bit too perfect in order to end a rally, and uh, errors made. But uh, I am really, really impressed with the complete game that the Hansworth Royals are uh, are demonstrating, and you know obviously that's why they're ranked number one. Been very successful the whole season. Yeah, they've. They were second at the Red Surge uh, tournament out here. They were first at the UBCO tournament. They were first in the North Shore Invitational. They were also first in the North Shore League. And they were first from the Lower Mainland. So winning is, is uh, comes natural for that's, this team. That's their habit. That's their habit. Again, a lot of grade 12s on that team. Uh, led by grade 12s, and uh, that makes a huge difference. And a strong winning history yep. at Hansworth. Well, you know, all four of the teams in the, uh, in, the, in the medal games, one of the keys has also been very experienced coaches, and it's no different in this match. Alan Hayhack has been around the sport forever, a coach, administrator, um, really knows what he's doing. And out, to, out of the timeout, Earl Marriott goes to their, their big bomber, and she gets the job done, Kara Katurikis, and she's back to serve. Oh. 
and outstanding kill, but the set from Nicola Ross set that whole play up. Just a well, spectacular setter. I think both the setters for Hansworth are making their hitters look extremely good, and that's their job, so well done to them. I spoke too soon. Kim Kong is, is at least being consistent. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty tight call for a setter playing that ball. Um, but he's the boss. Yep. Oh, hey. that's a rare error, actually. Come to think of it, we haven't seen too no. many. I think that might be the first serving error. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, there was a jump serve error by Karen. Yeah, we had to serve long. Yeah. So we got Kayla Oxlund back to serve for Hansworth at a score 17-10 for Hansworth. And a nice swing there through the middle. For number 13, Nadia Brokovich. And she's back to serve. Serves up an ace. Number 15, Maya Bennett has been passing very well up until this that that shank served there. I think it's a good strategy to go after that deep one serve. Carry call there. Very tight. Very tight. One thing uh, I would do if I was Mark Castles, uh, definitely I wouldn't let my team serve to the libero for Hansworth because she is, everything she passes is, is perfect. Oh, take a swing. Looked like that set was a little bit low. She couldn't fully finish her approach, and she hit the ball out on that one. Yeah, she had to come off the net a little bit to run the step around and force the middle to go a little wide and uh, couldn't quite catch up with the ball. We'll see what happens here, because Kara is up in the front row for Earl Marriott. Oh! <laughs> Earl Marriott looks a little bit confused. They don't know what to do. They're talking with Coach Castles here. Well, anytime a, a left side can swing through the block like that, swing through the seam, to wonder about some game plan there. And now, again, Danica. Yeah, it goes off the hands, just powers right through it. Yeah, really disrespecting that block, which is uh, fantastic. And ball said long. Body language from Hansworth just seems very calm, very confident from all players on the court. You know, if they make an error, they make one error. They don't string them uh, along, so. Uh, Really nice level, consistent play. Another perfect pass. Wow, this is the tightest I've seen a match be called. Very, very, very tight. I thought it was a nice clean set, I but it was a very uh, clean set too. I, uh, I don't have a referee's badge. Ball served out. Nicola Ross back to serve here. 21 15 for Hansworth. And. Kara Katurk kiss. She decided.
decided to uh, to set in the front row that time, and yep. obviously went over with on on one with the dump. Trey on two with the dump. Long person to serve to. Yeah. Nice lefty swing from the left side. Interesting they keep Kara out on the left side. Yep. That whole rotation. You need a little bit of pressure now to close the gap on the Hansworth Royals. play again. Kara swings high off hands. Yeah, and good setting choice by Tara Cobble. Realizing the hot hand. Absolutely. And then this timeout is called by the Hansworth Royals. Feeling that push from the Mariners. And we got the wave going here at the Vancouver Island University gym. Started by the Kelowna team. Very loud, fun crowd. It's great to see all the teams finished up and now just cheering on the top two teams left playing. Once again, I'm Shane Hyde. I'm the head coach of the Vancouver Island University women's volleyball team. And I've got Rick Beavis, the legendary coach here, former coach of the the Mariners here at Vancouver Island University. Enjoying the action here on feature court. That's the way it should be, top two teams. Absolutely, and uh, we've been treated to a, a pretty good first opening set. Both teams playing well. Now we got Danica Cowie back to serve. The Mariners need to keep the pressure on. It's 18-21. Again, they keep going to the libero. Best passers. You know, Earl Marion, they do two two things wrong in that play in my mind. They they, they serve the libero like we've been talking about, but then a huge, easy free ball that they put over. They don't even make that a challenging free ball. No, they need to attack that somehow. Somehow. Not against a team like Hansworth. There you have it again. Yeah. Turkis with a kill once again. What's impressed me with Hansworth is their their left side attackers. If they're not putting the ball away, they're 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 putting Marion in trouble. I think that's been the difference so far in this first set. I think that the difference in this first set has been that passing from Hansworth. Yep. They're able to run on at least two options on every single play a absolutely. of long passing. Yep. And so that means that those left side and wing hitters are getting later blocks to deal with as well. That was Emma Schill. Hey, the Mariners aren't rolling over, though. They're making Hansworth uh, work for every point. For sure. It's 20 serving 23. Once again, an easy free ball. That needs to be a swing. Talked about it earlier, the blocking of Danielle Corrigan. There was another example of a well-timed, well-penetrated block. Absolutely. And I think they're keying on uh, the right side a little bit.
That's a fantastic swing there. That is just a Maya great Bennett. job. All of these hitters for Hansworth. Maya Bennett going up for a set point and just swinging away. I love well, to see that. Maya Bennett there took exactly what the set gave her, drifting outside and just really disrespected the block. Best way to end the rally. Off hands, out of bounds. Very good. So first set goes to the Hansworth Royals. This is a best, best of five match. So he had a very experienced coach in Mark Castles. What does he tell his team? In, in my mind, I, I thought that the Earl uh, Marriott Mariners played a fantastic game, uh, but just fell a little short there. What do, you, what, do you, what do you tell your team there, Rick? Well, I think, I think you want to highlight the positive. They made some great defensive plays. I think, <coughs> excuse me, one thing that I would suggest would be a little more assertive on third overs. So if they can't get a clean swing, well, at least challenge them. Uh, pushing the ball deep corners, maybe dropping one short, keeping it away from the libero. Uh, you know, they match up well defensively. So if they could just put a little more pressure on Hansworth, take away their middle attack, I think we're going to see uh, even an even tighter set. And then on the flip side, with Alan... Ahag, what's he, what's he telling his players? I see a uh, standout former Hansworth Royal taking the time out right now in uh, Rebecca Oxland, who went off to play at Western for her career. But uh, what, are, what are these coaches saying to their team? I think, again, you want to emphasize the positive. And what I really liked about the Royals first set was how consistent they were. They didn't string errors together. If they missed a serve, then they sided out. If they had a, 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 you know, didn't make a dig, same thing. Just really calm and consistent. Didn't give up points in runs. That little run of five points in the beginning of the set was really the difference for the Mariners versus the Royals. Yeah, good point. Again, we've talked a couple times now about the body language and the body language of the Royals. You really, you really couldn't tell the difference when they were up by five points or giving up five points. Absolutely. Kind of kept that even keel. Yep. Again, I guess it's all the, the championships they've won this season. And uh, the veteran play of their grade 12 players. Well, I think that's also a key is that you do have a lot of grade 12 players on the floor for the uh, Hansworth Royals. Very experienced, used to winning. So here we have it. Second set starting up. We've got Hansworth serving. It's Danica Ayak back. Nice up. That's a beautiful dig. A reserve. Yep. That was a quick whistle. Well, I think the ref uh, thought it was third contact, and of course that was the second contact. Yep. So beautiful rally, though. Good skills being exhibited by both teams. So we had a reserve there. I think again, uh, number 15, Maya Bennett, on the left side, start uh, going off hands. That's where she was successful in the first set. That's twice now that the Earl, Earl Marriott Mariners went through the middle here in the early, early part of the second set. I wonder if that's maybe a game plan that Coach yeah, Castles yeah. has put in. A little chink in the armor there. She only had one walk up on that, and she carved it well. And there's a rare service error from Kara Turkis. It's all tied up at one. We got Ariel Gagno. Back to serve for Hansworth. So 
So there's that challenging third ball that Absolutely. you said uh, needed to happen. And, and obviously, the Mariners were saying the same thing in, in between games. Cause there's a difference. We've got a, a center penetrating from the back row. So that free ball is going over to one. The middle back didn't shift quite quickly enough. And uh, they easy, scored easily. Oh. And then a little <laughs> snibbler over the net. It's the first lead of the, uh, of the entire match for the Mariners. More aggressive on the third ball, both teams now. Yeah, that was great 10 player, Tyra Anderson. Not afraid. Impressed by both teams, great 10 players. And that's a great swing by Maya Bennett. Changing up her angle there. Yeah. Once again, I'm so impressed with number seven, the setter, Nicola Ross from Hansworth. Everything just seems so clean out of her hands, uses every player. And jump sets every, almost every ball. Crowd doesn't like that. No, there's dirty hands from compared to what we saw last set. And that's the problem when you're uh, when you're an official and you start calling it tight at the beginning of the game. Everybody's expectations are you're going to keep that Very up. tight. Yep. So I'm sure Cam would like to have that one back. It's five serving two for the Mariners. That's a... It's like a whole new game for the Mariners. Their third <laughs> contact, they're way more aggressive. Yeah, that was a bomb from Tara Cobble. Great 11 player. Running these 6-2 offense, uh, we're seeing a lot of sets out to the right side. Again, Hansworth, body language, composure still staying in check even though they're down by three. But I kind of feel the Earl Marriott Mariners have really changed their body language and their intensity level. There you can, you can really feel the momentum shift. Well, if their passing is, is better, and, uh, I think they're definitely setting more balls to the middle. Confusion again on that back row center penetration. Eight serving three for Earl Marriott. Tara Cobble back to serve. And there's their leader, number seven, Nicola Ross. Normally setting, but taking a nice swing out there on the right yeah, side. She just powered it through the block there. Hit the ball flat, but uh, such good athleticism. Trouble. 
It's a timely serve for Danielle Corrigan. And basically another ace there. They're, they're going after the uh, Earl Marriott Mariners libero right now. And now they've pulled her out of the serve receive. And a beautiful pass, good idea. Net violation on number 12 for the Mariners. So that's that, the point. that's that difference we were talking about earlier about stringing together these unforced errors. And that's what, for the most part, Hansworth hasn't done. And they've been uh, putting the pressure on Earl Marriott these last few points, once again. And nice roll shot there by seven. Nicola Ross, again, on it. For Hansworth, now it's all tied up. Oh, That's about a five or six point run it is. for Hansworth. It is. It's exactly what you were talking about, about yep. those points and runs, those mistakes and runs. Ah, maybe we take all right. Danielle there with her serve. It's all tied up at nine. This is the second set. Best of five match. It is the gold medal match here at in Nanaimo, British Columbia. We're at the Vancouver Island University gym. And it's number two, Charlotte Pavlik back to serve for Earl Marriott. Ball hit out. Too casual on that. Needed to be a little more thoughtful on what she was doing. Not just rely on her athleticism. And there's an ace serve by Nicola Ross. She's really impressing me. On every side of it, there's been some digs that she's made. Nice timely digs from from Nicola as well. You know, she, she's obviously a, an amazing setter, but she's offensive. Her serving is strong, and then her defense. I just like the way she moves. Too. She's very smooth in her athleticism. Always playing with high energy, high motor. Playing with a smile on her face. Playing with confidence. Yep, really, really nice player. We'll see if this timeout from Mark Castles helps the team kind of regroup because the Earl Marriott Mariners were looking so strong up until about seven points ago, and then they just they couldn't stop the, well, the I think, errors. I think one of the things that happened is their serve receive broke down. A couple of nice attacks through the middle, the first two points. Maybe saw a little bit of a chink in uh, Hansworth armor. And then when their serve receive broke down, they couldn't run the middle. So it looks like they've gone to a, a four-person flat serve receive here. A lot of bodies there. Yep. A net call. <laughs> Coach Ahak was all over that one. Yeah, Ahak uh, definitely uh, made the call there early and got the refs to agree. Trouble. And that's four hits, charged to the, to the Mariners. Yeah. Really has been a tale of two teams right now. Absolutely. at the beginning, and wow, they've just, the wheels have fallen off. Yeah. 
There we go. Nice high swing. Off hands by number 12. Nadia Brokopich, and she's back to serve. She's trailing 10-13 and down one set to none. There's a difference right there. Easy third ball. That, that, uh, that ball should be attacked coming out of the back row. Put more pressure on the defense. Oh. Earl Mary got a bit of a break on that one because that serve was probably long. So a little, a little communication breakdown there with Hansworth. Seems like uh, their strategy is to go to position one where the setter is penetrating out of and uh, seems to be working for them. Yeah, I uh, accept uh, that one. There. Danica here is back to serve. Had a quiet, strong game, I would say. Yeah, it's great energy, great yeah. leadership. When called on, she's done well. Oh, wow. Miscommunication there. Once again, there's the grade 10 for Hansworth now, just swinging away, packed. Crowd, championship final, and just going yeah. for it. You gotta love that. <laughs> Karakaturkis. Making a kind of a beat shot there, splitting the, both defenders, getting yeah. the point. Sometimes it's just about location, location, location. getting in trouble for celebrating too much there on the bench. My referee Trevor Thors, always uh, breaking up the party. There's a few rare errors that we weren't seeing in that first set from Hansburg. Yeah, just a little technical error on that uh, serve. Toss was a little low, dropped her elbow. But the key for Hansworth is that they haven't had a string of them. But they're still... There's two errors together. There's two in a row. And that's a rare service error, or service receive error by their libero. Uh, that's number 16, Emma Schill serving for Earl Marriott. Down by one point. Making a bit of a push here. Perfect pass. Oh. Net violation charged to Earl Marriott. It's a nice dig though. And it's Oxlund back to serve. 17-15 set two. Another one of those kind of half-speed shots. It just falls right into the pot, we call it, right? Yeah, that's a little bit cheeky, that shot right there. Just uh, altered pace and uh, good vision.
A little scrappy at the net right now. And, and Hanser puts over one of those half-speed roll shots of their own and scores. It's 18-16. Maya Bennett serving for Hansworth. Ooh, that's an easy serve. But it gives the another free ball. It's another kill for Danica Ahart. I'm really impressed. Number five, Natalie Lawson, the libero for uh, Hansworth. She just really quarterbacks the back row really well, whether it's serve, receive, or defense. It all starts with defense. Oh, a beautiful set, but didn't look like she was that ready for it. I really, once again, and Danica Ahak, she's really supplying the energy. Yeah, just great ball control. Yeah. Knows when to swing hard, knows when to take something off it. Tyra Anderson, the grade 10, fearless out there. We saw her do the little half-speed roll shot that scored, and that time she decided to just close her eyes and hammer it. Yeah, she's got a great future. I like the way she plays with a smile and confidence. So Nicola Ross swinging for hands and getting them. And Coach Castles for Earl Merritt not happy because no lines person saw that. But I think or anybody a... uh, else in the gym. Seems to have uh, thrown them off a little bit. Now Castles, Mark Castles calls a timeout. Hansworth in the lead, 22-17. Well, this uh, set hasn't quite had the same flow as the first set for Hansworth. Made some mistakes. Unfortunately, the Mariners haven't really been able to close the gap. And in fact, the gap has grown. Got to get back to that uh, ball control and running middle, in my opinion. So once again, it's the second set here in the gold medal match. It's the 4A High School per Girls Provincials hosted by Dover Bay. But the finals are being held here at Vancouver Island University. We got a great atmosphere. We got all the teams packed into this gym. And it's Hansworth, Danielle Corrigan serving at 22-17. Well, good time out by <laughs> Coach Castles. Yeah, we always credit those, uh, those points to the coach. And as the coach that's losing that serve, uh, losing that point off the serve, you're always not very pleased with your Teammate. Oh, great job. Another great swing by Nicola Ross. You know, she's not the tallest player out there, but she sure has a presence. And I, I think the Mariners need to do a bit better job of recognizing where the ball is likely to go as well. There's that energy again yep. after the swing. 
You know, number 11, uh, Ariel uh, Gagnon, she's doing a nice job of selling the middle. She's not getting a lot of sets, but she's causing the, the middle blockers on uh, Earl Marriott to be late. And there that's set point number two for Hansworth. 25-18, they take that set. Going into the third set here. Hansworth's up 2-0. The number one seed, showing why they're the number one seed. Consistency, really been the key. So I know I sat on the All-Star Committee this whole weekend and uh, we were watching a lot of the Hansworth uh, matches. And it was very difficult to come up with an all-star team for that Hansworth team because there's so many good players. You know, they, they seem like they play within themselves so well. You know, they don't make a lot of errors. They don't try to do things that are too fancy or beyond their means. And uh, really tough team to defend. And well coached. And well coached, yeah. So many times, these teams, you forget about the coaching staff and the, the amount of practices and mental training and physical training that go into uh, making these athletes who they are. And a lot of times, a lot of times you forget about the coaches. Yeah, both these coaches have put a lot of years into the sport. It's great to see them be successful. It's why they have programs as, as opposed to just, uh, you know, a good team here and there. They, these two schools are constantly at the top of the heat. <coughs> it doesn't hurt when you get a whole family like the Oxlands going through one school as well. Every couple of years you get an all-star for two or three years. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask you that. I wonder how many provincial goals Hanging in the, in the Oxland uh, family home. Uh, quite a few. <laughs> quite a few. So Rebecca was off to Western. Emily is currently playing at the University of British Columbia, Okanagan. Yep. All setters. Yep. And, uh, all and setters uh, can hit too. if Kayla continues the way she's going, uh, there'll be a lot of university coaches uh, selling their uh, selling their school. I see here's a big shout out over to uh, Peyton Knapp, who's just rolled over to the uh, awards table. Showing her dance moves off. She's uh, maybe checking out some of the hardware. It's been a great weekend of, of volleyball here at the 4A Provincial Championships. Dover Bay's done a great job hosting. Vancouver Island University has done a great job. The girls from the Vancouver Island University women's volleyball team have been lining, scorekeeping, doing a great job as well. Here we are in the third set. Earl Marriott to serve. Kara. Katurikis with the kill. She started off really strong in that second set, and then we kind of didn't hear much they from her. They went away from her, yeah. and uh, they're going to need to feed her. Trouble. Yeah, missed serve there. Ariel Gagnon back to serve for Hansworth, all tied up at one in the third set. Oh, trouble.
Dowie with the, with the block there. She's just a great 10 as well. Playing on a big stage. Tight call, but spectacular save by the setter there that in, in a lot of situations would be uh, let go. Yeah, that's not going to get called uh, in many situations, just with an athletic play like that. Ball still came out clean. Good, good battle at the net. Unfortunately, I think Danica Cowie just got a little lost on that. Didn't get out there to close that block. That's trouble. Oh, nice save by Kara there. Absolutely, no panic. This is going back. Oh, I lied. Oh! <laughs> that fires up the crowd. <laughs> old school fist. Yeah. Close fist. The old fisty. That's Danielle Corrigan. Waking up the crowd there. Smart play by Kara. Sense that uh, Hansworth was, was back on defense. Not, not my favorite play in the world, but uh, she sure plays high above the net. Down there. Perfect pass. There's Danielle Corrigan again. You know, it, every five or ten plays, it's a new person's name we keep saying. Yeah. And now it's Danielle's turn to carry your hands worse. Katurikis with a huge bomb. Yeah, she's definitely trying to pick the team up and carry them on her shoulders. She's doing a great job. Oh, she gets the lucky <laughs> roll there. Really lucky. You know, watching Kara this whole weekend, her jump serve has been very powerful, but it seems like she's she's laying off it a yeah, little bit. It seems like she's forcing it, actually. It's got a very, very, very high looping trajectory. You know, as you know, Shane, a jump serve is either one of the hardest serves to take or one of the easiest. Yeah, if you don't get the pace on it, it is a yeah. quite easy with the top spin. That's a nice set. Beautiful. Again, both setters Beautiful. Put show here. Yeah. You know, just when you think that Kara's set was spectacular, then 
Nicola comes out with her own. Like, yeah, absolutely. This shows why these two teams are here. Setting. Block. It's Danielle Corrigan back to serve 7 6 for Hansworth in this third set. Hansworth's up 2 0. Cheeky. KG veteran play there yep. by Nicola Ross. You know, we talked about these setters being so fantastic, but, you know, I look over at, at Kara Katurikis and we're amazed by how well she's setting, but we don't realize how, uh, I don't mean to be mean here, but how poorly Earl Marion's passing because she's cleaning up the play so well with her sets. Well, I think what we're seeing with Earl Marion is that they're, their defense and their passing is not as crisp as Hansworth. You know, the, the libero for, for Hansworth uh, has really been, like I said before, quarterbacking the back row. And we've, got, we've actually got four setters out there that are very skilled. And the difference, I think, has just been the quality of serve receive and, and location of digs for Hansworth has made their offense virtually unstoppable. Yeah, I agree. But that's that that is what separates these two teams from I think the rest of the pack at yeah. this school. There's there are there's good setters for sure uh, at all in all these other teams, but but we're definitely seeing two of the best setters here. Um, I believe in uh, Nicola. Uh, oh, there's no doubt about it. Kara. And it's I think it's really interesting to see both teams in the final running a six-two offense. Yes. Because the setters can bomb. Here we go. Mariners attacking through the middle. I think if, they, if they're gonna be successful, they have to have that, that middle attack on a consistent basis, or the threat of a middle attack on a consistent basis. I would say that's the case when, when Kara's in the back row, when Kara's in the front yeah. row, I think you gotta just feed her. Absolutely. Whereas with Hansworth, you can kinda go to any player because they're all the same. Yep. That one was Danica Ahak. And ball served long. There's another Ross. example of a, a of a jump spin with not enough pace. Yeah, I agree. Too high trajectory. That's just great court awareness there. She knows that all the court is cross court. Really smart play. 10-8 Hansworth, third set. So that was a, a challenging tip that Hansworth turns around and transition it, transitions it into a, a spectacular swing. It's just yeah. the story of Hansworth. Yeah, great transition, great transition. Stanica and Ehak back to serve. They're really trying to force that middle. Yeah. Oh, look at that, turn and burn. Unfortunate. All right, so here we have Kara entering the front row now for Earl Marriott. They've been trying to force the middle every time. We'll see if they just feed her the ball like we were saying. There we go. Nice 
Nice block there. That's the great 10, Danica Cowie. Yeah. She's had a couple of those. Yeah. One on one. Usually the uh, advantage goes to the hitter. Usually, yeah. It's crappy now. Oh, wow. It's a great angle. Great angle. Once again, a couple opportunities that Earl Mary could have went to Kara, and they, they yeah. cho choose to go away from her. I that was interesting. That was the first set that I've seen Nicola Ross stick her feet. So I wonder if there's a bit of fatigue happening here. Usually she's jump setting everything. Number five, Tyra Anderson, looked to be wide. Even uh, Coach Ayak A little surprised on that, yeah. But whatever, lines person disagree, called it in. It's 11-12, Earl Marriott serving. Tough serve. Great swing. Seems to be a, a spot that Hansworth is targeting from their middles. They set that middle a little bit higher now, and then they uh, they cut it to position yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's about knowing where the court is, and then what kind of pace to put on the ball. Trouble. You know, small things and great players. If you if you could see that uh, the play by Kara. She knew where the court boundary was. Yeah, she had to keep her feet with inside the court boundary, yeah. and she did an amazing job yeah. to stay inside. Spectacular play. What a great dig. Kara just went up there and bombed the ball line. And it didn't them. And no, you know? it didn't even phase them. makes Kayla a huge Oxley. dig. Yeah. No one cheers yeah. and goes crazy because they're used to it. Yep. It happens all the time. Yeah, absolutely. There's another one. No, not so, a bad idea from uh, Emma Schill there. But Looking for hands there, trying to end the rally. Just a little off balance, perhaps. But going back to that last rally, Earl Marion had three opportunities to give the ball to Kara, and your biggest hitter who's hot, yep. and they don't, and now yep. she's in the back row, she's yep. setting. Yep. They force, her, they force her to take first contact sometimes. Again, a deep middle shot, this time to position five on the court. Yep. Scores those two open shots, one and five, through the middle. Seemed to be a point of interest for the Hansard team. A little too much adrenaline after that big kill. So it's Emma Schill back to serve. It's 14-16 in this third set. Hansworth have the first two sets. That's trouble. Oh. 
Double hit called. That's been consistent with yep. what uh, officiating's been in this, called this final. He's called it pretty consistent. Yeah, easy jump serve. Oh, break down there. So once again, a spectacular dig by the libero for Hansworth. Yeah. Natalie Lawson. Yeah, that's just a little bit of inexperience with Danica Cowie. Just a grade 10 on a big stage here. Just got handcuffed a little bit. Ball, ball had a bit of spin on that set that the yeah. referee let go. There's another grade 10 burying the ball. So Hansworth pushing ahead here, forcing Mark Castles, coach of Earl Marion, to make the timeout. Call the timeout here, it's 19-14. So they've got to pretty much just go two for one now, trying to get it tight right down the stretch and keep the pressure on. So side out, earn a point before they give up another one. Side out, earn a point again. They've got to slowly close that gap and then see if they can just force uh, Hansworth into some uncharacteristic errors. And then if you're Hansworth, great coach once told me, just patient side out volleyball and you'll run out of time. That's right. Years ago, famous coach was Rick Beavis, I think. <laughs> that's all they have to do. Yeah, they don't have to change anything, that's for sure. Just keep mixing it up. I think when, uh, Danielle Corrigan back to the front row. Definitely go to her because she's hot. Look for Earl Marriott to set number 13 through the middle here. Yeah. They've had absolutely. some great success. Yeah, absolutely. Out of Wow. So they chose to go to the grade 10, who's been getting the job done, Tyra Anderson, but it was a great, yeah. great block continue from, uh, from Hansworth. And Hansworth's up 2014. Oh, oh they missed the, that. Uh, officials the officials have missed a call here. The officials have missed the back row block. Yeah, that was a bad missed call. Yeah, it's, uh, Alan Ahak doesn't seem to be too upset about it. Yeah, nobody seemed to. Yeah, I think only the ones uh, that saw it were uh, the two of us. Oh, they found that net. There we go. That's that volleyball karma again. So it's 21-15, Hansworth. Danica Ahak back to serve. Oh, trouble. Good save there, though. She holds her set so long to make it so deceptive that it's hard for the uh, for the Earl Marriott blockers to get set. Yeah, and a great selection. Run hard middle and throw it outside. And ball hit out. Yeah. Earl Marriott. You know, and that's the right set choice as well. Number 12. Uh, Danica just barely missed that. It was a great approach and swing. Oh! Wow! wow. That was a massive wow. Yeah. By the great 
10, Tyra Anderson. Oh, I don't know where that came from. That was fantastic. 16, and you pull that kind yeah. of a bomb out. At, from How the, did the line? Tenor. Wow. This kid's going to be good. Oh, my gosh. And there's the other great 10 for Hansworth that hits it into that open corner. And it's 24-16, possible match point, gold medal match point, and it's Ariel Gagnon to serve. Going outside. Keep swinging. Oh, oh. spectacular. Save by Nicola Ross. You know what I, I loved about that is that Kara went after that second ball just as hard as she went after that first swing. Totally. You know, she could have easily tipped and, and been passive, and she really swung on the second one as well. So we have Charlotte Pavlik back serving against match point. To the libero again. And there you go, that's the same thing like you're talking about. Same thing, not a great approach, but she uh, just took a sharper angle, took a little bit off it. It was a great swing. So here we go again. The great 11, Charlotte Pavlik, serving against match point. She gets it again. Oh. Oh, called a lift. Calling a carry, wow. <laughs> So every time she goes back to serve, she's facing gold medal match point. A little bit of pressure here. Great serve. Andrew well, gives a free ball. Oh. There it is. I don't think a hand, hand violation is going to be called today. No. There it is. Hands are so the court. It's a kill by Maya Bennett to end the game. And there you have it. The Hansworth Royals, 2015 Provincial Champions once again. Standing ovation for the Hansworth Royals. Came in ranked number one, leaving ranked number one and champions. Great season, great season Hansworth. It was a great final. And you know what? You gotta, you gotta applaud Earl Marriott Mariners. They fought hard. They had, they played great for a team that was ranked seventh coming in and then coming, going away with the silver medal. Just an impressive. Impressive job, great play by their leader, Kara. She just did everything she could. Yep, I love the fact that she kept swinging. And they, you know, they just, uh, it was a great final. But that Hansworth team, wow, what a, what a great group of veteran girls.